ASTM-C138 is the standard test method for density or unit weight, yield and air content gravimetric of concrete. This procedure determines the unit weight of freshly mixed concrete and gives formulas for calculating the yield, cement content, and air content of the concrete. To perform this test, we will need a balance or scale accurate to within 0.1 pounds or 45 grams or 0.3% of the expected test range, whichever is greater. Depending upon the slump, we may need a tamping rod, the diameter of which shall be 5 eighths of an inch. The length shall be at least 4 inches greater than the depth of the measure, but not more than 24 inches in overall length. And at least one end of the rod, the tamping end, shall be rounded to a hemispherical tip of the same diameter. We may need a vibrator, once again depending upon the slump. The diameter of the vibrator shall be at least three quarters of an inch, but not more than one and a half inches, and shall have a frequency of 9,000 vibrations per minute. Furthermore, the combined length of the vibrator shaft and vibrating element shall exceed the depth of the concrete section being vibrated by at least three inches. We're also going to need a measure. The size of our measure is going to depend upon the maximum aggregate size in our concrete. However, in no case shall the measure be smaller than 0.2 cubic feet. Furthermore, the measure must be made of steel or other suitable metal and must be calibrated in accordance with ASTM C29. We're also going to need a strike-off plate. If our strike-off plate is metal, then it must be at least one quarter inch thick. If it's glass or acrylic, it must be at least one half inch thick. And the length and width of our strike-off plate must be at least two inches greater than the diameter of the measure with which it is going to be used. If rotting, we'll need a mallet. All mallets shall have a rubber or rawhide head. If the measure we are using in this procedure is one half cubic foot or smaller, then our mallet should weigh 1.25 pounds plus or minus one half pound. If the measure we are using is 0.5 cubic feet or larger, then the mallet we use shall weigh 2.25 pounds plus or minus one half pound. And of course, we'll need a scoop. If the air meter bowl is used in this method, then the bowl must conform to ASTM C231, test method for air of freshly mixed concrete using the pressure method. And the bowl must be calibrated in accordance with ASTM C29, test method for bulk density or unit weight and voids in aggregate. In most cases, the slump of the concrete is going to determine our consolidation method. If the slump of the concrete is greater than three inches, then we must rod the concrete. When rodding, we'll fill the measure in three equal layers. For measures one half cubic foot and smaller, each layer shall be rotted 25 times. For measures one cubic foot, each layer shall be rotted 50 times. And for measures larger than one cubic foot, each layer shall be rotted once for every three square inches of surface area. If the slump of the concrete is less than one inch, then vibration must be our consolidation method. When vibrating, we want to fill the measure in two equal layers, and we want to insert our vibrator at three different locations across the surface area of each layer. Under normal circumstances, one can assume that sufficient vibration has been achieved when the surface of the concrete is relatively smooth. We also want to make sure not to over-vibrate our concrete, which can cause segregation and loss of intentionally entrained air. And note, if the slump of the concrete is between one and three inches, then either rotting or vibration is acceptable. Now, when working with self-consolidating concrete, 
Fill the measure in accordance with ASTM C1758, standard practice for fabricating test specimens with self-consolidating concrete. Now that we understand the basics of ASTM C138, let's go through a detailed performance review. In this review, we'll be using the Type B air meter and the rotting procedure. First, we want to obtain our sample in accordance with ASTM C172, standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. Now, determine the mass of the measure in either pounds or kilograms. We can now add the first layer of concrete, filling the measure to a third its volume. Be sure to move the scoop around the outside perimeter of the measure for even distribution. We can now rod this layer 25 times. We want to uniformly distribute our strokes across the full cross-section of concrete. We want to rod the layer throughout its entire depth without forcibly striking the bottom of the measure. Now, using our mallet, we want to tap the outside of the measure 10 to 15 times. We can now add the second layer of concrete. When rotting this layer, we want to take care to penetrate the previous layer by approximately one inch. And then, once again, tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 times. We can now add the third layer of concrete. We want to rod this layer throughout its depth, penetrating the previous layer by approximately one inch, and repeat the tapping procedure. Note that after tapping the third layer, but before striking off, a small quantity of representative concrete can be added or removed to compensate for a slight deficiency or excess concrete. However, keep in mind that one eighth of an inch above the rim of the measure is considered the optimum. When striking off, we want to press the plate on the top surface of the concrete, covering approximately two thirds of the measure. Now, in a sawing motion, we want to withdraw the plate to finish only the area that we covered. Now, place the plate back over the original two-thirds of the surface, and then, with vertical pressure on the plate, in a sawing motion, advance the plate off the measure. Now, incline the plate and strike several sweeps with the edge of the plate to produce a smooth finish. Now, thoroughly clean the outside of the measure and the rim and determine the mass of the measure, now filled with concrete. We now want to record the volume of the measure to the nearest point 0.001 cubic feet and report the unit weight or density to the nearest point 0.1 pounds per cubic foot. Now, to report the density or unit weight, we want to report it to the nearest 0.1 pounds per cubic foot. We do this by using the following equation. D equals M subscript C minus M subscript M divided by V subscript M. D is the density or unit weight of the concrete in pounds per cubic foot. M subscript C is the mass of the measure filled with concrete. This is in pounds. M subscript M is the mass of the measure, empty, in pounds, and V subscript M is the volume of the measure in cubic feet. Let's go ahead and do an example. Let's assume that the mass of our measure with the concrete in it is 92.1 pounds. The mass of our measure empty is 19.6 pounds, and the volume of our measure is 0 0.504 cubic feet. So here, what we want to do is take the mass of our measure filled with concrete, this is 92.1 pounds, and subtract from it the mass of the empty measure, or M subscript M, which is 19.6 pounds. This is going to leave us with the weight of just the concrete, which in this case comes up to 72.5 pounds. We now want to divide the 72.5 pounds by the 0.504 cubic feet. 
and rounding to the nearest tenth of a pound we should come up to an answer of 143.9 pounds per cubic foot for this concrete. Determining the unit weight of the concrete is just going to be one portion of achieving your certification. The other portion is going to be calculating yield. So let's go ahead and do some yield calculations based on the unit weight that we just achieved. So for our example, let's assume that we have just determined our unit weight, which was 143.9 pounds per cubic foot, and we've been handed a batch ticket that says there's 27,300 pounds of total material in the truck. And we know that the concrete has been designed for 7 cubic yards. We now have to calculate our yield per batch in cubic feet, the yield per batch in cubic yards, and the yield per cubic feet per cubic yard. Once we achieve these numbers, we're going to go ahead and calculate the relative yield for each. Now the first calculation we're going to do is the yield per batch in cubic feet. And this is a very straightforward calculation. It is M, the mass of all the materials batched, which we've already determined to be 27,300 pounds, and we want to divide it by our density, which we determined to be 143.9 pounds per cubic foot. So therefore, we take the 27,300 pounds and we divide it by the 143.9 pounds per cubic foot. And again, basic math, pounds will eliminate pounds, leaving us with only the cubic feet, and therefore we have 189.7 cubic feet in this truck. Our next calculation is yield per batch in cubic yards. This is similar to yield per batch in cubic feet, except here we're going to take our density and multiply it by 27, the amount of cubic feet in a cubic yard. So if we take the mass of all materials batched, 27,300, and divide it by 143.9 pounds per cubic foot times 27, we end up with a yield of 7 cubic yards. Now, before moving on to relative yields, let's calculate the yield in cubic feet per cubic yard. Here, all we do is take the yield per cubic foot and divide it by the yield per cubic yards, or in this case, 189.7 cubic feet divided by 7 cubic yards gives us 27.1 cubic feet per cubic yard. Relative yield is the ratio of the actual volume of concrete produced to the volume of concrete as it was designed. Therefore, a value greater than 1 is going to indicate an excess of concrete has been produced, while a value less than 1 is going to indicate that the concrete batch is short. So, to determine relative yield, all we have to do is we take the yield, which is the amount of concrete that was actually produced in the batch, and we divide it by Y subscript D, which is the amount of concrete for which the batch was designed. So, if we were to do relative yield for cubic feet, we would simply take the 189.7 cubic feet, the amount of concrete that was produced in the batch, and divide it by 189 cubic feet. And just to refresh your memory, where is the 189 cubic feet coming from? It is the 7 cubic yards for which the batch was designed times 27. If we wanted to do relative yield using cubic yards, we did produce 7 cubic yards. That was our yield. We designed for 7 cubic yards. Therefore, relative yield is 1. And if we wanted to do relative yield for cubic feet per cubic yard, we actually got 27.1 cubic feet per cubic yard. We designed, obviously, for 27 cubic feet per cubic yard, once again, a relative yield of 1.00. Now, the last calculation that you may be asked to do is to calculate the air content using the gravimetric method. Here, this is a straight percentage calculation. What we want to do is take T, which is the theoretical density, minus the actual density, divided by the theoretical density, times 100. 
and a quick note. The theoretical density is the density of the concrete computed on an air-free basis in pounds per cubic foot. The theoretical density is usually determined in the laboratory. The value is believed to remain constant for all batches that are made using the same material and the same proportions. And D is the density or the unit weight of the concrete as it was achieved. So here, if we assume that we have a theoretical unit weight of 151.4 pounds per cubic foot, we want to subtract from that the actual unit weight, pounds per cubic foot, of 143.9, divide this number by the theoretical unit weight, 151.4 pounds per cubic foot, times 100, gives us an air content gravimetric of 5.0%. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude ASTM C138 Standard Test Method for Density or Unit Weight, Yield and Air Content Gravimetric of Concrete.